What's up guys, we're back with another McFarlane DC review getting into yet another Batman figure. Shocker, I know, right? So we've got a look at the Flashpoint Batman and I am definitely not in any way 100% on board with this line. There is plenty of stuff that I have no problem skipping, but this Batman in particular just looks too good to not get. So I was very, very interested in snatching this one up. He, of course, comes in the standard McFarlane uh, multiverse style package. So you've got the big window with the figure in there, DC multiverse logo on the bottom, Batman Flashpoint logo running down the side, and then the back of the box has got a little bit of cross-sell artwork for other figures, as well as the inspirational artwork for this design in a big placard on the back. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our Flashpoint Batman from McFarlane. This guy is, uh, well, he's all about the looks for me when it comes to the overall figure because there's something about this particular look for Batman, and I know that it's not the Batman. I'm not going to go into spoilers or anything for people who aren't aware or may want to know what this character is because it's not Bruce Wayne, uh, but it is an interesting looking figure. I think it's just a nice, slightly beefier Batman, especially compared to the sort of standard Batman that we got in the first wave with uh, the McFarlane line. So yeah, there's, there's just a lot of cool stuff going on here. It's a very standard figure as far as uh, articulation goes. There's not anything crazy or, or new here. No, uh, no new ground has been made when it comes to McFarlane toys here, but he is a pretty solid figure. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. Uh, to start with, we've got our head that can look, well, a little bit up from your sort of neutral pose, but he can look down really good. And he is, I mean, he is seven inches, uh, so he'll look good if you've got him looking down on a slightly smaller figure. You've got some good tilt side to side, so really good attitude there. And then of course you've got uh, full rotation as well. Arms go out at the shoulders, but you do have to contend with this cape. So they go out a good bit, but the cape is, is pretty rigid and it's gonna fight you, but it's still, he can go out a pretty decent ways. You do have a butterfly joint in there. You can of course rotate, but that is definitely gonna be hindered by this cape. So you just have to push it out of the way a little bit. You've got your bicep swivel there. So pretty normal stuff. We've got our double jointed uh, ratcheted style elbows, and then we've got our uh, ball hinges at the wrist, just like we've seen with, I don't know, every other figure. We've got our torso cut, so he goes backwards, forwards, side to side rotation. There is of course a ball peg at the waist. It helps to go backwards as well. And then you can use it to sort of twist, but it's pretty locked in there. Uh, so he doesn't twist too, too far at that ball down there, but you can use it to help him go backwards a bit more and to aid a little bit further uh, when it comes to crunching him forward as well. There is your normal McFarlane thighs. So he goes out that far, uh, about that far. They go forward about all the way. You do have to rotate them a little bit. And of course there is no thigh swivel. So you'd have to extend them to twist, but it's not gonna help you at all. I really, really wish there was a thigh cut on this figure. I know that he can do it, or he, I say he, because Todd puts his name, his name all over this stuff, but McFarlane Toys can do it. They did it with the uh, armored Azrael uh, figure, so they can do it here too. You've got your double jointed knees with the ratchets in there. And then you've got rotation, thanks to the ball hinge down at the ankles. And then of course you've got your toe hinge. I do not in any fashion like the way this hinge looks on this figure, uh, but it does work really well as far as functionality. So again, pretty standard stuff. He is uh, very par for the course when it comes to this line. Nothing new, but nothing really missing either. Now, as far as the overall look and feel of this figure, for the most part, I am very, very happy with the way he turned out. I like the design for this version of Batman to begin with, right out of the gate. I think he looks cool. So uh, you've already got some points with me right there, but it translates to figure form pretty nicely. So, you know, you've got things like the uh, the line work and the texture on this gray suit, which I, th I think works really well in conjunction with the black armor pieces, as far as the gauntlets, which have some battle damage on them. Same with the knee pads and the shin pads, and just the, the black of the cape. It's a nice color combination. Of course, that's very Batman to begin with, but then you throw in uh, the black insignia on the chest with the red circle and the red utility belt. Something about that just just works for me at a, at a base level. I think it looks cool. And then of course, you've got the two holsters for Batman's guns, which of course are interesting uh, when it comes to a Batman figure, especially for someone who doesn't really know what in the world was going on too much with this figure or this version of the character. I love the spikes on the cape. I think the overall drape 
that the cape has and how it hangs, the wrinkles, the overall texture, despite the fact that it is a fairly rigid plastic cape, does look really good. Uh, it's not the same type of finish as the gauntlets, uh, the armor as well, so it's a little bit more matte, not necessarily as uh, shiny, which works okay because this is armor. It's likely metal in some fashion or something like that, carbon fiber, things of that nature. I do think the overall sculpt detail is very much there. The one area that I really don't like, and I've already mentioned it, are these ankles. They are functional, but I think they look just ridiculous because you've got that huge chunk that's just missing there. And I don't like the way it looks. Aesthetically, it's not very pleasing. Uh, it's functionally fine, but it's not very pleasing. The, the hands have the same kind of problem, but it's not quite as bad. Uh, ball hinges just don't really do it for me in that regard on many, in many instances, and this is one of those instances. Otherwise, I think the figure looks really good. I have uh, no real issues for the most part with uh, you know paint slop or anything like that. The only real issue when I have with paint is is, uh, is going to be at the face, and it's even just kind of a minor one, and more of a nitpicky kind of thing. But I think, in general, this guy just looks cool, and I think they did a good job uh, translating him into plastic. Like I said, though, there is one area at the face that I do have a bit of a gripe nitpick when it comes to paint, and it's the it's the little scruff, the stubble for the beard. It just looks it looks a little too haphazard for me, and it doesn't look very... I know it shouldn't look clean, but it doesn't look very cleanly applied. It's just sort of like one swipe and you're done. Uh, I've already seen some repaints of the face with a little bit more pronounced stubble, and I think it looks a lot better. Granted, I don't think it's that bad, so it's kind of a minor nitpick, but it's it's going to be the one thing that I, that I notice when this figure uh, is in view. The rest of the head sculpt, though, I think is really good. I think the head is nicely proportioned. Again, another thing I've had some concerns about uh, with that original Batman figure. So by comparison, I think this one looks really good. He's got a nice scowl going on. I dig the red lenses on the eyes and the really short bat ears up top. I think it's a nice design. And for the most part, I think it translates really well. Again, translates really well into plastic. My only real slightly minimal gripe is that I'm not a big fan of that, but otherwise... I think he looks pretty solid. And now as far as some size comparisons, we've got our Flashpoint Batman here in the middle, and then we've got that first wave Batman here on the side, and then a standard-ish six-inch style figure in our Power Rangers Lightning Collection over here. So you can see that this guy is a little bit shorter, actually, uh, than the regular Batman, the more normal Batman figure. Not by much, it's a, it's a hair, but he does, I think he does look proportionally a lot better than this figure. And then you can see the, the normal difference that we have between McFarlane figures and a more standard 112 uh, seven-inch style figure. A few other comparisons, though, we'll move Batman aside and do another 7-inch scale figure. So here is uh, Xerax from NECA Toys. And then because I just can't not do this guy every single time now, uh, there he is with the Beskar Mando. So you've got a much larger figure, both in height, well, not much in height, but overall girth and beefiness. And then a standard 12, uh, 1 12 inch figure, so 6-ish inches. And then for something maybe a little bit smaller, and then something another... Another larger figure as well. So here he is with the Super 7 uh, Raphael from the Ultimates line. And then another McFarlane figure, just because I've got him handy for now. There he is with Devastator. So you can see that there is a varying array of sizes, just to give me an idea of what he looks like with something bigger, something smaller, and then something that's definitely not within scale when it comes to uh, 1 12th stuff. And then, of course, Raph, which I think works... Uh, pretty well, honestly. I think they line up quite nicely. Now, as far as accessories goes, outside of the standard card and stand that we get with every McFarlane release, we've got two guns, and these have been in the holsters uh, the entire time until now, so we can well, move that arm aside, and we've got another one down here. So they fit in these holsters pretty snugly. Uh, there's really no, no chance that they're going to fall out, I don't think. I'm pretty happy with that. So you've got two of these uh, pistols, and they have a decent bit of kind of dry brushing on there, a little bit of gray to bring out some of the sculpt. So they're not just flat black. Uh, they definitely look like they've got a little bit of wear and tear on them. I do actually like that, so it helps them stand out a little bit. He can hold them just fine. Of course, he only has the two trigger finger gripping style hands, so he's perfectly suited for holding two guns. The grip is pretty tight as well, so I don't think they're going anywhere no matter what. So he doesn't come with a lot of stuff. Uh, he just comes with the two guns, and I don't really know anything about this character to know what he should or shouldn't have beyond that, but I like them, they look good, and they fit really well. 
So overall, I think this is actually a pretty solid figure. My gripes on this guy are minor at best. Really, I'm not a big fan of the ball hinge joint look at the ankles. I just think it breaks up the sculpt too much. And I don't really like the stubble on the beard, but that's pretty minor. Like, it's really not something I'm worried about too much. It's just kind of a thing. It bothers me slightly, enough to mention it, but otherwise kind of passable for most folks, I'm sure. He moves pretty well. He still does need a thigh cut, but at this point, I'm kind of growing to accept that that's not really going to happen anymore. But overall, the figure is really well done. I think the cape looks good. Paint is really well applied for the most part. And then the sculpt is nice. Again, this design just translates into figure form really well. I like a lot of what they've done to make this Batman figure. Proportionally, he looks good, and it's just a nice looking action figure. One of the handful of McFarlane DC figures that I couldn't pass up. I've said it before, I don't need all of them by any stretch of the imagination, but this was one that I had to get. So that's going to do it for this look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Flashpoint Batman. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.